Hey, it's Mac and it's Mac time. Thank you for joining me. It's a good time and also a little bit of a sad time. As you can see here, Parker and I are packing up the old dungeon. We were fortunate enough to buy a new house, which is great, and we're going to be moving over there. But in the meantime, I need to stop filming videos, except this was a great time to actually show you guys exactly how to package up your latex if you're gonna need to store it for a long time, sort of like I've done here. So I'm gonna show you that, but in the meantime, I just wanna let you guys know to say goodbye to our old dungeon and stay tuned as we move over into our new place. Of course, that means there's gonna be a little bit of a hiatus on our videos until we're moved, but I'm sure it'll be worth it once you guys get in and you see what we've done to the new place, all right? So thank you for coming again, and let's get right into this video. When it's time to store your latex for a long period of time, say six months or more, there's a few things that you'll need. You'll need storage bags. You'll need a large bag to help you apply talcum powder. You'll need unscented talcum powder, of course, and it helps to have thin packing paper as well. The first step you'll need to complete before storing your garments is washing them and drying them overnight. If you're not sure how to wash your latex, we have a video to show you how to do that. Just check that out. The only thing you'll need to do is skip the step that shows you how to shine your garment because you don't want your garment to be shined before you store it. Now once your garments are cleaned and dry, take your large bag, this could be a trash bag or whatever you have, and fill it with a generous amount of talcum powder. Take your garment and place it inside of the bag. Close the bag up tight and do a little bit of a shake, shake, shake and bake to get the talcum powder everywhere it needs to be across the garment. This is the best method I've seen for ensuring you get an even coat of talcum powder across your garment. And it's also helpful to flip your garment inside out to make sure that it's coated everywhere it needs to be coated. As you can see here, I've prepped my workstation with a large sheet of newsprint. This is to help ensure that the garment doesn't get ruined in packaging. It's not necessary, but I'm a little bit anal and I just want to be a little extra cautious. This next step is totally optional, but I like to wipe the talcum powder on my pants apparently for no reason. When storing shirts such as this one, I like to take a secondary sheet of newspaper print and then fold the sleeves on top of that. Then I, of course, wipe the taco powder off of my pants because again, that's not a necessary step. I then fold the garment in such a way that no parts are touching each other unnecessarily. Again, this is just an additional cautionary step to ensure that the garment doesn't touch itself while it's in storage. Next, I take my storage bag, which in this case I'm just using large Ziploc bags, and I label the bag with the description of the garment, the size of the garment, and which one of my family members it belongs to. As I won't be able to see the garment once it's packaged, this is helpful. Now I'll go ahead and place the garment in the bag, and it doesn't hurt to add a little bit more talcum powder for protection. Then I will partially close the bag and try to push the air out so that I save as much space as possible when this gets packaged. And that is pretty much the entire process for storing your latex for a long period of time. I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do it again, but with a much larger garment. As you can see, I've prepped my workstation with another large sheet of newspaper print. Now I'm just making sure that the garment is as open as possible so that the talcum powder can be applied everywhere.
Now it's time for the shake and bake step again. Once again, apply a generous amount of talcum powder, place your garment in your large bag, and shake, 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 shake. Larger garments require a little bit more shaking than smaller garments do, so go ahead and get jiggy with it. You can see here that some of the parts didn't get quite covered, but that's okay because I'm gonna go ahead, flip the garment inside out, and go right back to the shake and bake step again, to making sure that everything gets coated evenly. And that's going to make sure this garment is protected for a long time while it's stored. So now that I've flipped the garment inside out, I'm gonna go ahead and apply more talcum powder to my bag, a generous amount, and I'm gonna go back and put the garment in the bag so that I can shake it again. This garment is pretty well coated now, but even if there are a few areas that aren't coated as well as they should be, the use of the newspaper print is going to mitigate any problems that I would have. So just like I did with the shirt, I'm going to apply another sheet of newspaper print on top of it and I'm going to fold the sleeves on top of that. And since this is a singlet that has legs, I'm going to go ahead and use an additional sheet of newspaper print to fold the legs on top of that. Essentially, I'm going to use as much newspaper as I need to ensure that I can fold the garment as best as I can so that no parts of the garment are touching itself when it's stored. And now to fold the garment for storage. And now to take my storage bag, label it as clearly as I can, so that I can easily identify the garment when I'm looking to wear it. And of course, now I'm going to place the garment into the storage bag Add an additional amount of talcum powder and push as much air out as I possibly can. That's pretty much it. Now I've shown you exactly what I do when I'm storing my latex for a long period of time, at least six months or so, to make sure that it's safe and protected when I'm ready to wear it again. And once I am ready to wear it again, I'm gonna go ahead and follow the procedure we laid out in our how to clean your latex video to make sure that it's ready to go for me next time I'm ready. Now, thank you again for joining us for another video. Please go ahead and give us a thumbs up if you like what you saw and be sure to subscribe for more content and we'll see you at the next one.